Hey everyone, I was once recommended that if you're buying lottery tickets then you should wear Apache war paint and an American Indian headdress because fortune favours the brave. Get it? Talking about that expression, well, Boris Johnson certainly upped his game this week, finally moving the Brexit saga into the end stage and putting an end to the bespoke stalemate in three years of nothingness that Theresa May had so expertly crafted in order to grind everybody down. The last couple of years had seen so much can kicking it was starting to resemble one of those old black and white videos of kids playing football in the street. But now May is gone, Theresa May is gone, summer is nearly gone and it's time to take a stab at goal or put it over the end zone line or whatever sporting metaphor you happen to pick from. Anyway, there's a couple of things in life that can be relied upon. Like for instance, the more out of shape someone is, the more liable they are to refer to their football team as we. And this week was certainly no exception with an especially partisan response from the media. The Prime Minister decided to have the usual September break from the party conference season, but he also had the gall to add on an extra four days, which was portrayed by many as being something akin to a violent coup in sub-Saharan Africa. References were made to Caesar, Napoleon, carefully leaving out the bit where those leaders were actually wildly popular at the time. You know, it's a strange world the Remainers live in. No doubt they sit around dinner tables discussing how dreadful the Beatles were because they all smoked. And perhaps, unlike the rest of us, they thought that Game of Thrones ended brilliantly, if only because the chap sat on the throne at the end of it had a disability. Really, though, these four days at the end of the standard time off are what the outcry's been about. Four days, when at the same time the complaining MPs could have easily called for an end to the summer holidays. But, hey, there's a lot of good shows on Netflix to catch up on, and that tan won't fix itself. I suppose in the meantime, though, life goes on and November draws ever closer. However, there are two people who benefit immensely from all of this that don't seem to be getting a mention yet. Number one, frivolous lawsuit filing Gina Miller, who'll be making plenty of TV appearance fees when she's not busy suing people. You know, she seems like she'd be a lot happier in life if she just moved to the US where they file predatory lawsuits all the time for, I don't know, selling a foot-long sandwich that's only 11 inches long. Someone else, though, Shane McGowan from the band The Pogues, will undoubtedly be raking in a few extra royalties after people go online and misspell the word prorogue. You know, maybe he can use the money to smarten himself up, or just buy a new hedgerow in order to drag himself through it. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, please subscribe.